Hey guys, Kevin Rogers, owner of On Point Pro Styles in Gainesville, Georgia. I'm a professional window tinner and instructor. So today's about tools. Uh, you can see here on the table the massive amount of tools. Now, don't be afraid. Um, this is just an abundance of tools to show you how many different, and there's much more than this, but how many different types of tools are out on the market, many in which are shaped a little bit different, but serve the same purpose. Um, so we'll go over a lot of this and uh, many of the different options, but my main point here is gonna be, how do I get the newcomer um, into the business and what tools should you buy? So. Basically, almost everything you see on this table you can get from tintdepot.com. Uh, and that's going to be who I'm referring to as far as purchasing anything and where you should go uh, in the need that you, or in the event that you need a tool. Uh, we're going to go over everything from the mo one of the most important decisions you'll make is going to be your, your knives and, of course, your blades. And then, of course, you've got corner tools, you've got hard cards, hard cards, hard cards, hard cards, hard cards, handles and squeegee blades. You've got handled tube squeegees, you've got scrubbers, you've got uh, back window tools, um, picks, shanks, window scrapers, sprayers, uh, even a tint keg. And then of course, this is drop in the bucket to compare the amount of heat guns that are out on the market. I don't have nearly, <laughs> not even a tiny fraction of what's out there, but I do have a couple of the most popular ones. So we'll go over those as well. Um, uh, and hopefully get you started. Hard cards. Think of a hard card is literally that. It's a harder, not rubber, uh, in most cases. It's, uh, the, the color is gonna dictate the hardness of it. Blue, in this case, I believe is the softest. Blue here is the softest. Or actually, I think the gray is the softest in this type. But uh, anyways, um, that's really the biggest difference. You can see this has a long flat edge. 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 What's the difference? Well, not much other than this one can also kind of double as a sort of cornering tool. So that's kind of cool, something to keep in mind. What do I suggest? Uh, these and these are gonna be your most common. I actually don't use any of this other than these black ones. And if I lose this black one and all I've got is a pink one, well then I go and I use a pink one, but Anyways, don't make it complicated. Stick with something simple. Get you a couple medium grade cards, whether it be these, these, speed wings, or what. Corner tools. So they do um, basically that. They get into corners and they are great to swipe these sides uh, when installing side windows um, on framed uh, doors and such. Uh, the tint tucks into the front and back of the door gasket. You use one of these to stick it in and squeegee it down. These are thinner than these. So if I get into one of those situations with a quarter window with a tight rubber seal, these are what I will use to get up into the rubber seal and extract some of that water out, uh, being careful not to scratch the tint. These are great, that's a little big foot. This is softer, this is harder. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is you can also apply the felt tips or the felt uh, to these squeegees as well. These. Again, same things, just different shapes. They all, uh, they all hold their, uh, their value. So this is actually curved on all three sides. So this would be best used to use this tip portion to really get back and reach. Again, the same thing. It's the hardness level dictates the color. Uh, these, if I was to recommend anything here, I would get you one of these and I would get you one of these, preferably the one with the yellow blade. Uh, this is actually the Conqueror. Uh, brand. This one is not branded. However, I believe it's available. Um, just, I don't think as, as durable, but this one actually offers the cornering such as these. And it also has a rubber side. That's a rubber squeegee there. So if uh, you didn't want to carry so many, this might be your one and only go-to. I used this for years uh, and still do from time to time, but I tend to get lazy and I just reach for one of these guys, but I still find myself going back for this. Okay. So knives. Now this blade is actually a 30 degree blade and I wanted to bring that out and show that to you, which I also have loaded in this knife here. It's very pointy. That's a 60 degree blade. In the window tinting world, this is the blade you're gonna use. This blade can scratch the glass, it's way too sharp, and also 
when you do fine cuts with it and you only put a little bitty blade out, it's almost like a needle point. Lots of room for error. So stay away from the 30, uh, 30 degree blades. So these two are gonna be the main popular blades. This one I believe is called the Ofa Silver. This one, you see the red dot right there, red dot there, that's considered respectively the Ofa Red Dot and the number one chosen blade in window tinting and I'll show you why. So they both click blades, the blades are snap off blades so you can uh, break you off a clean fresh blade after cutting. They both have snapping mechanisms on the end of them. So Kevin, what's the difference? Why is the red dot so popular? So on this one, I'm going to click it one at a time. Click, click, click. That's three clicks, right? Get this one to the top. Click, click. Sorry, that was the second click or that was the first click. Click, click. So three clicks and three clicks. The biggest difference is, is the Ulfa Red Dot offers smaller increment clicking, allowing you to put out a much smaller amount of blade to protect things like trim and rubber as you're cutting window tint patterns out. These aren't much money. Go for the Red Dot. Another thing to watch out for, they've got carbon steel blades and they've got stainless steel blades. Carbon steel is a very, very hard steel. Uh, it sounds good, but it's not. It will scratch glass. Uh, whereas your stainless steel is going to dull faster, but it's a little bit softer of a metal, so less chance of, of scratching glass. Note, it can still scratch glass. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you learn to cut. We'll go over that in a future video. Scrapers, um, another common tool that you're going to want to have. You can see things sitting here that you're probably saying, scraper, what are you talking about? So. The later model cars were getting more savvy and using plastic scrapers. Now everything you see here that's plastic is not necessarily designed to be a scraper and that's what's fun about window tint tools. This is a corner tool, however it's a very hard, very sharp green corner tool that can scratch tint very easily. Great to reach really, really far in uh, and use light pressure but definitely not something you want to put up heavy pressure on window tint but I have found that that makes a fantastic quick window tint scraper. I've used it this way on the window and I've used it this way on the window. Uh, gator blades, both of these, same thing. These are corner tools, but they're very hard plastic, so they're fantastic to give your window a scrape. Same, same, same corner tool, but makes a great scraper, just a quick all over scraper. Where you can older cars that has glue or stuff on, uh, on them, you're gonna probably wanna see if you can use a box razor like this, but you're gonna wanna make sure to check the glass before you do. Um, this is another, this is literally a plastic scraper. It's exactly what it is. It's very hard. Uh, it's built just like these blades here. It's got a rather sharp edge on it. So starting off, I'd say get you one of these guys and a pack of these and pick you one of these cool tools. This happens to be my go-to for scraping windows. I think this is a fantastic little guy. I keep it in my pouch. And that's what I use to scrape 80% of my windows now. Okay, rear window tools, or in today's world, even windshield tools where applicable. This is gonna probably be your biggest love-hate relationship. Um, so I have these scrub pads out because the first one I want to talk about is cleaning. Now you will use these on your side windows to clean with and that'll be another video on how to clean windows in and of itself. Uh, but be sure to pick you up a pack or a few of these white scrubbies. But these you cut down and you put on this Velcro here and this is what you use to reach way down into the bottom of the rear window to scrub the glass. So. Do you have to have it? No, I highly recommend it. The second tool I highly recommend is the Bulldozer Auto. This is the one that's going to reach you to the bottom of those really tight areas between the deck and the glass and also get behind most of your third brake lights. Those two, I'd say if you were to ask me what to buy, buy them. Third one is the Side Swiper. Um, this is the one that you're, you can do most of the bottom corners with this, but there is some uh, aggressively cur uh, curved back glass in the bottom corners that this long flat area just doesn't want to mold to. So this is what you're going to get down in there and side swipe the corners out with. So these three, I highly recommend. Another one, not so famous, not so favorite, but there are a couple of cars that I've had no choice 
but to turn to is this. I believe they call it the block squeegee. It's very thin, very flexible, has a plastic side and a sort of a rubber side, but in those tight, tight back glasses, the Passat being one, this is my go-to to get down in there and not have to take the deck apart. This is the love hate. So this is a little bitty guy that I've used maybe once in the three years that I've had it. So I don't recommend it. This is another swiping tool. I use it actually quite a bit. I'm getting used to it. It was uh, frustrating at first because I'm so used to this little guy, but I'm getting used to this one and I actually like it. This, the reach, it's not a bad tool. So you're going to read a lot about it and there's a lot of love hate with it. Uh, it's another, you know, flexible bottom edging tool. I'm not a fan. Uh, I can't quite get the pressure out of this that I want. And it could just be because again, it's new to me. I've only had this a few months and I refuse to give it a fair shot. So it is another good option. However, if I was to tell you the four tools that I would purchase, it would be these sprayers. Um, you're going to need something to spray the windows, clean the windows, install the window film, uh, possibly an adhesive remover, cleaner, what have you. Tintipo.com's got a lot of uh, pre-made stuff that you can buy by the gallon. I think even the court um, where you, you, know, you don't have to come up with your own, say, slip solution like I do. Uh, this is the Poly Sprayer 2. Uh, it's a pump sprayer, holds more liquid than your standard spray bottle. Um, you pump it up spray 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 with a little while and you pump it up keep pressure in it so that's kind of cool um not a terrible investment um these are pretty cheap so if you're getting started i'd get you a few of these i use these still today in the, my shop i if you're just getting started get you a few of these uh figure fi i've got i'll do some videos about how to mix it what to look out for how to do it uh and things like that but this is the go-to that i would suggest maybe two or three of these to start off with they're cheap um and there you have it Okay, so the next thing you're probably gonna wanna consider is a good handled squeegee and well, what's the right blade for you? So the biggest difference between all of these is the hardness. Um, your Orange Crush uh, is going to be a softer blade. Um, it's the one I tend to use. Uh, the white is, uh, I believe these are number three, which is a durometer um, hardness level. This is softer, a number two. Um, too soft and you leave a lot of scree, uh, streaks across the glass. You can get a lot of nicks from it. Uh, too hard, uh, this is a really hard blade. This is a number six blade, so softer than the blue. Uh, you've got the red line extractor. I believe they call this the clear max, somewhat soft. So right off the rip, you're probably not gonna know what's the hardness for you. If I was to make a suggestion of maybe two that you would wanna probably try that gives you a good range of hardness and softness, uh, I would go with an orange crush on a handle or the flat or, and or the flat out on a handle. Okay, hand squeegees or tube squeegees. So there's a lot of different options of these. Um, these are kind of cool. I've actually never used these. I like this yellow one, it's rubbery. This blue one seems to be a little bit harder than I would, uh, uh, would want to use. This one, same thing. Now this is a fusion handle. They call it the fusion hand job, and then you load a blade in it. So pretty cool, but that uses the standard handled style squeegee blade. So keep that in mind, not quite the same as these. So these blades all same sort of features. They have slots um, that you can use these just simple handles for. Uh, and obviously, we've got the large one, you've got the small ones. One of the most popular uh, inexpensive choices is going to be the yellow. I believe it's called the turbo, yeah, yellow turbo squeegee, and you can get it with or without this handle on it. If I was to recommend the starting squeegee, it's going to be the yellow. It's the most popular. It's what I started with, it's what I learned with. And after I figured out uh, the best uses for these squeegees, I ventured out to the other styles, the other colors, the other hardnesses. And now I still, I still use the yellow, it's my go-to, but now I have different shapes and sizes of the other colors. Um, but again, when you're just starting out and you're just getting into this, get you the yellow turbo squeegee. Can't go wrong, you can buy it in the smaller cuts or just buy you one big one, and cut it to size with a jigsaw. Okay, last but not least, um, another very important decision you're going to make uh, is going to be your heat gun. This is my go-to in my shop. This is an old Milwaukee heat gun. I've been using this thing for a long, long, long time. I'm one of the lucky few. It's lasted as long as it has. 
Uh, I like the feel, I like the grip, uh, I like the air output on it. It does go from about 550 degrees, 570 to 1000 on high. So uh, that's my choice, Porter Cable, and I believe uh, Craftsman makes a version very much like this. Uh, if you were to look into one of those, a little bit more pricey, but not too bad. This is gonna be the most common heat gun you find. It's made by Wagner. It's a good durable heat gun. It's got medium and high settings. These are priced right. They're pretty durable. They're, um, they're, they're handy, uh, readily available. Um, so this would be the one that I'd recommend you get. It's just the standard uh, Wagner heat gun. Selectable heat setting, medium and high. That's it, nothing to it. So that'd be the one I'd, that'd be the one I'd go for. Um, these others, this is the Wagner. Um, it's got the digital, version it's got the cool down on it so when you set it down it'll continue to run a cool fan on it to cool the tip down faster this is probably the cheapest one uh, i have here uh, i've never used it but i have uh, tested it turned it on checked the heat and all that stuff feels just as hot as these guys so when you're picking a heat gun pick something that's simple um, the wagner tends to be the most widely used gun probably the most uh, durable gun i would think uh, outside of just something super random and cheap like this one uh, this one doesn't even have a name, but if that's all available to you, if that's all that's available to you, get it, use it. Um, keep your heat gun cheap starting out. You know, you want it to hit that thousand degrees, uh, and that's that's really it. You don't have to be, you know, spending tons of money on a heat gun. Just keep it simple, get a decent heat gun, and move on. Okay, so here's just some other things that I had on hand that I wanted to bring up. Um, Definitely not something I would say is a must-have, but a couple of things here that if the budget allows it as you're getting into um, purchasing your tools. A couple things here I would recommend. This is glass aid. This is a tape used to uh, mark the border on the back glass uh, that you cut on. Cleaning back glass and even side windows. Glass aid makes a uh, clay bar. Uh, I would recommend, lightly recommend, because uh, you could do a good clean job without it. However, uh, this tends to help with peanuts and bubbles and back windows and such. So if I was to recommend uh, anything here that I'm talking about um, to make your life easier anyways and for a better job, it would be these two Glass Aid products, uh, the Glass Aid tape and the Glass Aid clay bar. This is sold in a roll. It's uh, felt. This is Teflon tape. This is uh, great and I've been meaning to get me another roll. These are gasket tools, um, so this is a shank, which is pretty cool. It helps you if you're a two-stage window tinner. Again, you'll have to check the training videos when we get to those. Uh, it's also good for helping to dig into the sides and um, really flush the sides out and clean the water. This is the same thing, kind of a gasket, a gasket push stick, uh, just tapers in the front and back. Chiselers, if there's anything here that I'd say get you one of, it's gonna be this pink chiseler. Now they have yellow, they have white, they have, they have pink. I've only ever used the pink. These are gonna be uh, the little white specks that end up between the tint and the glass that's just almost impossible to get away from. These crush that out. All right guys, so to recap, uh, I've narrowed it down. These are the things that I talked about the most. Um, this is mainly my go-to toolkit on an everyday basis. Any questions, contact tintdepot.com. They'll be glad to answer them. Uh, if you can reach out to me, reach out to me. They can reach out to me. Uh, but we're all here to help. We're all here to get you started quickly, easily, without confusion. Um, so you can see, big old table full of stuff. This is going to be all stuff that you say, I want to try it after you get in the business. But once, you know, getting started, save your money for buying better film uh, and, and practicing with the film and just buy the necessities, buy what you need. So again, tintdepot.com, all the tools you'll need. Any questions you have, reach out to them. They'll be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching.